Hey, Chin, bring up that article that uh, Marcellus Bennett was talking about. You know, have you, do you know him at all? I've met him a couple times. Smart yeah. dude, yeah. man. Him and his brother, smart dude. I've done a show with him. And he's just one of those smarter minds uh, to play in the NFL. So he went on this tweet because it says Brandon Marshall says he wants to fight Deontay Wilder. Uh, he and, he, and Deontay Wilder, and, and I'm sorry, Brandon Marshall goes all outbox and outclass him. Insane. You know, that's BCT. Video. I don't. Yeah. Know. yeah. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> Uh, then uh, Martellus Bennett put a retired six-time pro bowlers can get knocked out too, laughing. And then he goes on to put, uh, honestly, football made me such an angry person. Everything bothered me. Uh, football is interesting. Psycholo- uh, Psychologically. Psychologically, it's some it, it's some really dangerous shit. To really play the game of football, you have to uh, have some fucked up wiring in your head. It's chaotic. It takes years and years of brainwashing to go along with a lot of shit. LL, it started at Pee Wee. That's why you got to watch who is coaching your kids and what they're teaching them beyond the game. Mm. Uh, he put, uh, we're groomed at a young age to care a little less about humans. Uh, if you're the backup and the main man in front of you goes down, you kind of get excited but feel bad at the same time. Shit's crazy. And this part made me laugh because it's true. He put, most of these coaches aren't good men. Most of them are uh, egotistical small dick heroes. They love the spotlight just as much as the players. And they be dumb. <laughs> it's so true. I bet some dumbass coaches when I thought back yeah. on that. Uh, then he goes on, you know, and this is his perspective. Yeah, he put most of your uh, favorite players aren't good people. Like, for real, for real. He goes, there are some good dudes, though. John Kitna, probably one of the best people I've ever met. He's up there with Tom Hanks. Um, <laughs> Damn. Damn, he had time. But, <laughs> but he, he, he dropped some gems here. He goes, the constant reminder of who used to be by the fans and trophies and highlights and family as you're trying to transition to the new uh, you really slows down your process. Also, starting over, shedding the ego, starting over, uh, you've made it to the top is hard. It's hard to become a nobody after you were a somebody. Um, also, guys should prepare their families for retirement, life after football, because everyone's retiring, because football is truly family when you're a player or coach. The other thing that I've taught uh, taught guys, they is no longer being a part of the locker room. So not being part of the locker room. Understand that a lot of people weren't really their friend. It was just proximity that brought out the closeness. Really hurts athletes. After all you've been through, y'all would think we'd be friends forever. You put your body on the line for these dudes, this team. Y'all shower together, or cry together, been around each other's kids. And when you're no longer on the team, that bond can be uh, broken quickly. Mm. Uh, also, no longer being famous, quote unquote. Some guys need that stardom. Well, they don't need it, but they crave it. How could you not? It's been a drug since childhood. Mm. You've been a star for forever, but how can you shine without the game? Mm. It's interesting, right? Yeah. But how can you shine without the game? That's that's what we were talking about. Correct. When you only identify yourself as that, what do you have when that's taken away from you? Again, that's his perspective, right? It, you know, it's a little. Um, bias probably perspective I, I you know i don't know his journey what, what to the NFL. so you know i'm almost 44 and and you know you see those old guys that are grumpy and say you know those kids don't res- like I, now i'm not saying that like he's turning into that but you kind of feel like that when you you know when when you when you don't have perspective and the truth is all of us the world humanity is evolving and the younger generation you know they're going to benefit from the things that that we did, yep. the things that we struggled. And to me, that's not something to feel bitter about. That's something to be. That's something to be proud of. Yeah, and he, he had a, a good career, ten year career. Like he yeah. had a great career as a tight end. He was a stud player at Texas A and M. So, I, you know, the things that football let him experience and gave him, there's there's something to be said. Like you can't that's, all be bad, it, dude. It's not, but it just it's the way that it ends when people. And, and I say like I took a lot of slack for it. But I, I woke up halfway in, in my career, and I was like, wait a minute. I was like, wait a minute. What's going on? And I remember when I was a kid, I wanted to play football to have a voice. And I realized I've lost my voice because I'm a football player. People put me in, in a box, and yes. they don't take what I say seriously. And all they, you know, it's like run, nigga, run. They just want me to score touchdowns on on Sundays. And yep. to me, I was like, that doesn't feel that doesn't feel good for, to my soul. And mm-hmm. so that's when I walked away, and I said, I gotta find something something else to be passionate about. Otherwise, I'm gonna go crazy. Yeah, and, you're one and, of the pioneers, man. Because not so much in the NFL, guys even now stay pretty quiet. Yeah, but in the NBA, they're pretty loud. Yeah, that's that's NBA's wonderful. loud. That's wonderful to see. These past couple of years, NBA really. You know, when I was a kid, I I idolized Jim Brown. I didn't see him play mm-hmm. in person, obviously, because I'm not that old. But yeah, <laughs> but I idolized him not because of only what he did on the field, but he used. I keep talking about a platform. He used his 
uh, to have a voice. And he mm-hmm. was saying some really radical things at a time where, where I think African Americans in sports were came together and, and used their voice to have some pull. And think it, think who he you know kind of parlayed you know the network of Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, Jim Brown. You're talking about the the heavy hitters back then. Kareem Abdul, yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to make a change. Yeah, mm-hmm. his his is dicey with Jim Brown. And, you know, no one wants to talk about it. You know, you're talking about. He he had that platform. He had a voice and he's trying to make a change. But they also had those domestic violence issues, which were uh, you know was kind of but th- but a this scar is, on but his this, career. But it, it it was. But this is this is real. Like you know, if we go back, and I think we it's so it's so easy to forget to forget history, and it doesn't mean make, make it okay. But we're we're evolving out of that history, you know. And there was a time where it was customary to to do that. Correct. Thank God, like as humans. We're 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 waking up and we're and we're going out and of realizing that's yeah. not right. You know, I I agree with you. Yeah. I agree. You know, and they want to cancel like these old actors, like you know Clint Eastwood and these other guys who yeah. said some you know bad stuff back then. Or, I mean, we're all a product of our time. You know, yeah. In yeah. fifty years, people are gonna be looking back at us and, and, and saying the same things yeah, about you guys us. Are savage. Yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah, it's true. It's uh, like, you we, if up, we can have compassion, maybe you know the future will have will have compassion for us. Yeah, and but I I think we're not gonna get to compassion or understanding if you just want to cancel somebody exactly. over that stuff. It's true. It's like whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. You got to realize the context, the time. Times, you know, it's just a different arena. Yeah, it doesn't solve anything. Yeah, no. If yeah. you cancel them, then yeah. then those, those new guys are going to be scared to speak out or yeah. speak their mind. So they mm-hmm. they just keep everything inside. Yeah. How about the when I get off stage at the Laugh Factory? Right away, you go, bro. I figure out what you look like. I'm like, what? This is front of a bunch of other comics. I'm like, what? You're like, you look like a Rottweiler. We got a shit together. Oh, you do, bro. Yeah. Come on, man. I'm just saying, dude. Grab that mic, son. You do, bro. <laughs>